Hello, welcome to segment two of the Bible says this, what say you, Psalms 33 verse four, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. Now, I'm sure that you have noticed that yours truly, Bishop Patrick L. Wood Sr., pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, I am not alone. I told you in segment one that I would be joined in the second segment by two fantastic people who can bring something powerful to this subject. And I'm talking about uh, idolatry and how the spirit of compromise is, is taking place in the body of Christ, and it always happens. Has, but it seems to be celebrated. People are posting online. People are, are cheering Christians on as Christians are walking onto the world stage using the world's rules, singing the world's songs, trying to uh, win the world's award, all while all at the same time, while naming the name of Christ, worship leaders in their churches, some are preachers, some are ordained, some are apostles, some are, are people who carry the word, and yet on the world stage, in public, in front of the world, and, uh, and many believers are compromising their own witness by cheering these people on. I personally do not believe that this is a, a good development, that we have Christians who are talented enough to sing on the world stage, that's without question. Listen, the church, are, the church is filled with people mm -hmm. who can get those chairs on the voice to turn. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, most of the singers I know of in the church can out sing the judges. Hands down, any way you put it. But the issue is not whether or not you can sing a song. The issue is whether or not a born-again professing believer in Jesus Christ should be doing that. And if you have to compromise in the audition just to get your foot in the door, you, you got you to gotta sing something that doesn't represent Christ even though you are a worship leader or a minister or a preacher or an ordained person, the question is whether or not that is true. I just said in the previous in segment one, you can't eat from the, de the Lord's table and the, and the devil's table. Paul called on the saints not to be feelers, but to be thinkers, to be people who reason. And so I am joined today. I want you to hear from these dear, dear women of God. Let me tell you something about them. First of all, both are ministers. Both preach the gospel. Uh, Patricia Lester to my right. Uh, she's been a member of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for 21 years. She is an evangelist missionary in the Church of God in Christ. Um, uh, since uh, 19, uh, 2014, she received her uh, evangelist missionaries uh, license. She's been called into the ministry ever since 1999. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is using her, as a matter of fact, you're also an author of a book that she's written entitled For Him. And the book is How a Wife Should Love Her Husband. I recommend that you get it. To my left is Yvette Thompson. Yvette has been a member of the church for Upper Room here for 13 and a half years. And she is a deaconess missionary. Uh, she received her deaconess uh, license in 2016. She was called into the ministry at 2000, 2014. These ladies are part of the upper room. They are part of greater North Carolina jurisdiction, Church of God in Christ. Bishop Leroy J. Wood is their jurisdiction of bishop <laughs> and missionary Harazine Keys yes. is their state supervisor. <laughs> so for those Kojic members out there, Amen. I think we covered the bases and their district missionary is district, district missionary Margaret Moles and yours truly I am their pastor and the first lady is my loving wife first lady Pamela Wooden Amen. now I am grateful ladies to have you to come and join me on this and why these two well I'll tell you why these ladies have been on the stage with some pretty good 
talent and some pretty famous people and they walked away from the stage. I wrote it down. I put it in my notes here. These ladies have appeared. You know, I got, I got all my papers. They've appeared on the BET annual uh, uh, anniversary special, Video Soul. They have performed on, on the same stage with uh, people like Patti LaBelle, Michael Jackson, uh, Barry White, Gladys Knight, TLC, Frankie Beverly, Mays, Regina Bell, uh, Mickey Howard, and many others. And they sang uh, and, and uh, performed uh, with the late um, Gerald Levert. Levert. As a matter of fact, um, uh, during the 1995 Father and Son Tour, uh, when Gerald and his dad did the Father and Son 1995 Tour, these ladies were a part of that tour because they sang along with some others. We won't call their name due to contractual things, you know. Uh, they sang along with them uh, back up on the stage with Gerald Levert and Gerald had a, a, a storied career. As you know, he's no longer with us. Um, he passed. What year was that? 2006. 2006. Uh, he passed away, and, uh, uh, and so he's no longer with us. And 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 this segment is really not about Gerald Levert as much as it is about uh, when these ladies met Jesus. Uh, they walked away. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we see people with Jesus who auditions to be on the stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's only one Jesus Christ. Right. There's only one Christianity. And I want to know, I want to hear from these ladies. And I want you to listen because, as I said, you know, they've been there. They, they, they've been on the stage with the best. Praise the Lord. And they are part of our, our sanctuary choir. Here at the upper room, they're part of our, our, our praise team. Here at the upper room, uh, they, they, they sing with yours truly. They make me sound good. Now that's a challenge. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think that, that's your biggest claim to fame. <laughs> they help me sound decent. Uh, they're excellent singers and that. they're highly anointed. And, I, and, I, and uh, did I mention that they're preachers? Did I mention that? <laughs> All right. All right. Now, Patricia, I'll go to you first. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me what, tell me. Uh, tell the audience there about your experience uh, with Gerald Levert and why, uh, I don't know if the, if the group had a name, but I, you know, tell us what happened. Yes, we did. Well, back in 1995, okay. the group actually formed in 1993. We, shamefully, we called ourselves Exuality. <laughs> it was a, a blend of the word quality and sexuality, so we thought we were deep. Actuality. Actuality. Yes. Actuality. <laughs> all right. All right. We, we thought we were divas. You know, we were on our way. Yes. We were on the road. And uh, it was three of us. And, and one night we were um, actually performing at one of the clubs. And one of the, I guess, recruits from Gerald Levert's camp mm -hmm. came, saw us at the club and um, got our attention after we performed and asked us if we wanted to audition to be on the tour. Mm -hmm. So we told him, yeah, we were very excited. <laughs> oh, yeah. Said, wow, yeah. So they flew us to Cleveland. Uh, we auditioned, Gerald was pleased, the camp was pleased, and that was it. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we stayed for a few days, we made arrangements with our jobs and did all kinds of, we, we rearranged a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. We had to be on tour for about 10 months. Wow. Wow. Um, so it was, uh, it was exciting for mm -hmm. us at the time, and we got to wear uh, nice outfits, got a hair done all the time, <laughs> and the makeup, and, you know, been on, okay. on the stage in different okay. venues. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so it was exciting. Okay, you know, all right. Time for us. All right. Uh, uh, Yvette, now tell me a little bit uh, about uh, your experience, and, 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 and what, what do you recall about those days? Well, you know, it was exciting, as Patricia alluded to, we were on our way we felt special that somebody recognized us and wow somebody thinks that we can sing you know mm -hmm. we had been in a few local bands prior to that all right and we were on our own and we thought we were going places <laughs> so it was really exciting <laughs> custom made clothes city to city yeah. wow this is going to be nice for our careers or so we thought so uh just l listen just to be fair because i know the audience would, would want to know um what was it like singing with Gerald Levert, and you had you had the great Eddie Levert there, you know, and 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 no one questions uh, in any way 
uh, their talent. Uh, right. Just a, a powerful uh, father and son singing uh, group. You, you know the OJ's and all of their hits and, and Gerald and his hits. Uh, uh, that, they, that they could sing. Uh, no one, no one. That that's without dispute. So what what was it like? It was, we had to be on our A game okay. because Gerald was a perfectionist and, you know, the band, but they ultimate professionals. Okay. So we had to be on, our harmonies had to be mm -hmm. um, pure. Um, we had a fourth girl. It was three of us in the group and there was a fourth girl that, he, that was always with him. Mm -hmm. So it was four of us blending on stage. I see. So they expected us to be on and, you know, we're traveling on the bus mm -hmm. from city to city. We may not have even got to see the city. Right. Mm. Get on the bus and go to the next place. Right. So right. we were literally touring. Okay. And come back home when we could but um it was exciting but we had to be on the a game and and it was it was we, was, we, we like couldn't play we i mean we had to be you know at a certain level at that at that on that stage what was it like going from city to city uh, being on the bus and the, the experiences there well, it was interesting. I mean, we basically lived on the bus, and I think mm. the people that we traveled with, we traveled with the band. So mm -hmm. there was the principal bus, which, you know, had Gerald and some of the principals on it, and then there was the band and the backup singer okay. bus. Okay. So we usually traveled with the band members, and we became like family. That yeah. was mm -hmm. our family away from mm -hmm. home. So going from city to city, there were times we would, you know, stop late at night to get food or move on to the next city sometimes you woke up you didn't know where you were because mm. we were moving so much mm. right but um, it was a uh, home away from home what was it like uh, being on stage uh, performing with Patti LaBelle Michael Jackson <laughs> Barry White you know people like that because most of us don't know what it's like to uh, 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 to, to sing with them what was that like we were starstruck, of course. Okay, you okay. You heard me, Patti LaBelle. You're like, oh my God, Patti okay. LaBelle. And it was with everybody. Gladys yeah. Knight, when we first saw her, we thought, oh my God, mm -hmm. we're standing in front of Gladys Knight. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So we were starstruck. Yeah. I mean, we were, you know, back in Raleigh, North Carolina. So we, we hadn't been exposed to a whole lot. So it was exciting to see those, those players out there. D did you find that they were nice people? Actually, in most cases, yes. Good. They were very, good. very down to earth. Good. You know, met Shantae Moore and mm -hmm. a lot of folks, TLC. You know, they were just really down to earth. Good. People, you yeah. know, not often what we see on the big stage, but right. behind the scenes, right. they were fairly nice. Yeah. So, yeah. That, so there you were. Needless to say, neither one of you were missionaries. <laughs> no. Uh, <one. laughs> I was actually a backslider. Oh, uh, you were backslider? Back, yeah. You too? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, okay, now. Well, what happened? Well, in 1986, um, I was in college, sophomore year in college, you know, I, I met a man and <laughs> everything just went out the window. <laughs> it was just like, I just got to see what life is about. Okay. I had been in church all my life, had a wonderful foundation. My mom laid a foundation, Christian foundation, but I think I just decided I wanted to do me in 1986. Okay. And I'd actually been coming to the church at Lake Willow Road since 1984 mm. and um, but just walked away. Walked away. Just walked away from the Lord. You, you were coming to what church? I was coming to Lake Wheeler. Upper room? Upper room. Who was the pastor? Pastor Turner was there when Okay. The okay. All right. I came All right. back when you. Okay. I was getting ready to fuss. <laughs> you mean to tell me I'm <laughs> preaching and you just walked away? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So that, what happened now? So you, you, you were a backslider also? Well, yes. I was uh, in a senior in college. Okay. And um, a friend at the time, we were in church, and she, she said, are you ready? And I said, well, I think so. And I went up, and I said the words and accepted Christ. But for me, I really didn't. I knew Christ, but I didn't have a relationship mm -hmm. with Christ. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't regularly going to church. I moved around a lot with my job mm -hmm. to other cities, mm -hmm. other states, and I just wasn't consistent. So I really wasn't living a Christian life. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Wow. So it didn't take much for me. I mean, I wasn't out doing all kinds of things, but I wasn't living for Right, Christ. right, right. So um, what would you say uh, to those, uh, uh, Patricia, you said that you wanted, you had a good Christian upbringing, uh, raised in a Christian home. So what would you say to the other young lady who may be watching with the time we have remaining who want to just live their life and see what life is all about. Is, was that a good move? I don't think it's worth it because actually while I was out there, um, I didn't tell anybody, but I was actually miserable because once you experience the Lord, you, it's hard to go walk away from him and not have the effects of it. I see. You've tasted, you know 
what it's like to be a Christian and you try to fit in again mm. and you really can't do it. Mm. So if you if you have tasted of the good gift mm. and you try to go back out there, you're actually going to be miserable. It may be some joyous time. Right. But as a state right. of mind, I was miserable being wow. away from Christ. Well, we have a lot to talk to you about and you're hearing from ladies who were there who did it and walked away. Now, in the next uh, segment, we're going to talk about the experience. And what happened when Jesus showed up? Now, my friends, the Bible says this. What say you?